guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Books with Rachel Ayo. I'm going to be reviewing this book. It's called On Ajayi Crowther Street. It's written by El Nathan John and it's illustrated by Alaba Onaji. I'm excited to be reviewing this book because it's a funny read. I loved it. I literally read it sitting down for just a couple of hours and I had a very good laugh. It's one of a kind because it's a comic strip kind of book and I haven't read that in forever. I remember the last time I used to read comic strips was when I used to read Archie comics. So it was just interesting to see how a comic strip was brought back to life especially in a nigerian setting without wasting much time let's get into it so the book is written by El nathan john and i'm a huge fan of El nathan john because i love his writing style i love how satirical his work is i've read born on a tuesday almost went and cried in some ditch after i was done reading that i read becoming nigerian I laughed so much that my neighbors probably thought I was crazy because that book was absolutely hilarious. I did a review on it on my blog a long time ago when I read it and it was simply amazing. I know that a lot of people were then asking me, oh, where do I get it, blah, blah, blah. If you're looking for where to get any of his books, obviously you can get them from Roving Heights if you're in Nigeria and I guess you can check Amazon if you're not. I'm going to read out the synopsis of the book. On the noisy Ajayi Crowther Street in Lagos, neighbors gathered to gossip, discuss noise complaints, and faithfully head to church each Sunday. But beneath the surface lies a hidden world of clandestine love affairs, spiritual quackery, and hypocrisy that threatens to destroy the community from within. On Ajayi Crowther Street peels back the curtains on the lives of Pastor Apoborie and his family to reveal a tumultuous world full of desires, secrets, and lies. His only son, God's Time, is struggling to hide his sexuality while his daughter, Ketura, must hide the truth of her pregnancy to preserve her and her fa family's image. But it is the Reverend himself who hides the darkest secrets of them all. So the book is a satirical book. It's purely fictional, <clears throat> obviously full of comic humor, and it's actually illustrated in comic strips like this. Which is so interesting because like I said, it's been a while that I read any one of this kind of books. So the book is set on Ajay Crowther Street, obviously, as the name implies, and it's centered on the residents of Ajay Crowther Street. They're obviously different residents. There's even different characters which are perfectly illustrated in the book. But the major character on who the book is centered around is a pastor. His name is Pastor Apobere and his wife and their children, each of whom have their own little secrets. And it just chronicles the lives of each of these characters. The book is easy to read, it's full of humor. There's a lot of table shaking. A lot. Especially if you're Nigerian and you can relate to some of the humor that's in it. Um, like I said, even if the work is purely fictional, but I had a really, really good laugh. You can actually read this book sitting down in, like, in one hour or two hours max because it's so engaging and I love the way that each character brought something different to the forefront. There were a couple of plot twists here and there and I wouldn't really say that they were so unpredictable because this book really mirrored what our nigerian society looks like nowadays pastors and some of the things that go on in church a lot of hidden secrets and hypocrisy that goes on beneath families that people think oh they're so perfect and they can't do anything wrong and just seeing how children in growing up want to choose their own path and the sort of pressure that is put on children who come from maybe their parents are pastors and they have such backgrounds or they come from influential families and their lives are just chosen for them and sometimes when these children try to defy the path that has been chosen for them, the major concern is, oh, what will happen to my image as a pastor? What will happen to our image as the perfect family? It was just so interesting to see that although this book was really funny, there were so many truths, which unfortunately is what happens in a Nigerian society. I loved how, I mean, in the setting of the book, clearly it's in Lagos, um, but there was one illustration that I really fell in love with, and that was City Hall. When I saw that page, 
because one of the characters is receiving a phone call and it showed City Hall at the back. I got so emotional because I remember that when I was younger, I used to go to church at City Hall. We used to meet there. It's almost like it hasn't changed over 30 years after and it's still been the same one there. So I really love that. I thought that Alava did an amazing job with the illustrations, especially that one. Good job. The writing style of the author in this book was very easy to understand, made use of plain English. There were some parts where pidgin English was used because of obviously the residents on Ajay Crowther Street who could not understand English and so they had to speak vernacular or broken English and that was fine. I just had a good time reading it because each scene flowed into the next. I know that I talk about how I had a good laugh while I was reading this book but there were a lot of serious themes that were actually inside this book. Let's start with family and communal living which of and friendships which is obviously one of the major things that in a Nigerian society were very good at doing. I loved the representation of family in the book and as much as the family was flawed with each character having their own secrets that's reality at the end of the day because as much as they wanted to have this united front with the pastor doing whatever it is that he does best and in his church of his people who follow him wholeheartedly there was that theme of religion and it just goes to show unfortunately that's what a lot of <laughs> us are going through right now i know that there was a scene where they went and paid people in some maybe bus garage or something to come and do the miracles in church on sunday but hey that's actually what is going on it's not like it's some false thing there are a lot of false preachers out there there are a lot of false miracle workers out there who are actually paying people we've seen documentaries on things like this and this was just <laughs> An example of some sort of thing that happens like that there was also the theme of sexuality which of course was the secret that the pastor's son was trying to hide obviously the fact that he was gay the concern is not really oh are you happy as a person in this decision that you've made oh do I feel that this decision is right oh this is my opinion the only thing that mattered was how is this going to look on our reputation as a family? That's what a lot of children go through. And so you find that most people chart their paths the way their parents want them to and in line with what is acceptable to what is good for the family or what is good for the family's image. And then you find much later that people then decide that they're old enough to make their own decisions. Then they go on their own path and it looks like, ah, oh, that one was a rebel, oh, that one was crazy. But really, maybe that might just have been what the person had wanted to do all along but because they were being sheltered and being told oh you can't do this how would i look what will happen to my name and so they decided to act some other way there was also the theme of rape and the way these things are usually covered up especially when it is someone influential like a pastor which we see these days i love the theme on mental health in this book so while the pastor's son was struggling with his sexuality and opening up and then he something led to him having a sort of mental breakdown where he was depressed and i think somewhat suicidal and it was just so amazing to see how there were actually illustrations in the book showing where he went to germany he was able to get therapy he was in therapy sessions with his therapist and it was just so great because it just normalizes how important it is that if you're dealing with a mental illness you should seek professional help you should get counseling there's nothing absolutely wrong with it but it was ironic because he came from a religious family where quote unquote you're expected to pray everything out you're only depressed if you're not reading scripture or you're not praying every day but i loved how he still got professional help and he was still able to get counseling which actually worked for him so that's just to say that if you're going through any form of mental illness or you're experiencing any form of mental health issues there's nothing absolutely wrong with seeking therapy or getting help it's necessary that as nigerians we know that these things are okay because we tend to be a little bit over religious when it comes to mental health and nobody wants to talk about how getting professional help is actually a good way to deal with it so I really loved how these important, serious societal themes were tied 
intricately into this book as much as it was funny as much as it was light-hearted and I thought that the author did an amazing job with something so simple something so straightforward so thank you good job these illustrations I wasn't even focusing on trying to imagine or conjure up images in my head because Alava did an amazing job and I must really congratulate him on this piece of work here. Every single page was amazing. The artworks were consistent. I'm not an artist or an illustrator. I don't really know how these things go, but I thought it was an amazing effort. So what would my verdict be for this book? Definitely a strong 9.5 over 10. 9.5 for the writing, 9.5 for the illustrations because I, I was mighty impressed. So if you're looking for a nice comic strip book to read, you're looking for something funny to engage in, something to laugh at, and also something to learn from, then this book is actually for you. I got my copy, of course, from Roving Heights. If you've read it, let me know what you thought about it in the comments. If you haven't, let me know if you're going to get a copy and if you're going to read it. I'll definitely like to know what you thought about the book as well. Thank you so much for watching this episode. Thank you for liking, thank you for subscribing, and thank you for your support. I hope to see you in my next video. Bye! But he's a... Mm, but he's a Nigerian author, and he... Mm, but... <laughs> yeah!